This meeting is being recorded. Okay, hi. My name is Ezra Okenda. I'm one of the Iparija community members. I'm from Kenya, I'm from the Iparija Kenya. Uh, today, I decided for us to like, come to know Iparija on the development pers perspectives and so we are going to, 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 I'm going to start to, with an apology from David. David Postwell, we, we, we spoke the other day, he told me that he won't be able to attend this meeting because of the difference in time zones. And for those who are aware, he's based in California. So it's, it's I think it's, it's late over there. It's, I think it's almost midnight, yeah past midnight, so for that you will excuse him. Secondly, we had a precursor meetup late last year around Christmas. It was a more theory, a theory presentation where we, we learned the projects that are under the umbrella of Hyperedia. And today we are going to cover one of those, those projects, which is the Iparija Fabric. In today's meetup, we are going to cover on how to install the prerequisites to develop on the Iparija, or to develop Iparija Fabric Network, setting up the, the development environment, the file structure of the Iparija project, we will try to simulate one or one a network, a private net, network using Hyperledger Fabric. Then at the end of the event, we have a surprise community gift for those who are within the loop are aware. I think some of you have already might have already had an idea. This the gift normally happens annually. Also, Hyperledger community has events and the other amazing collaborative projects around it. Yeah, Fabric is one of them. So to start with, for those who don't know about Hyperledger, Hyperledger is an open source project that is trying to solve the enterprise challenge where like enterprises can be available on chain on a private network and also and also there are bridges that bridge the private networks the public network with a limited access to the community so that's basically what the Fabric is. It's supported by IBM uh, among other contributors. So to start with, we're going to start with installing the prerequisites to develop Hyperledger Fabric. So if you have any question, feel free to type it in the in the chat section, we will answer them. For, for, the, for the one who has, who's asking if you are going to basically use the test networks, it's true we are going to use them for, for, for this one, but also we will, I will give you guidelines on how to create your custom network. I'm not sure if time will allow, but if time will allow, we will try and simulate our own. The platform we are going to utilize today is the it's Linux, Ubuntu Flavor. Um, for those who are running in Ubuntu 16 and above, I think you will be able to follow along with me. For those who are learning lower versions of Ubuntu, I think for you, you will, maybe you can have some hiccups, but most of the, most of the commands should be able to run. Yes. And for those who are running on Windows, 
it might may not be possible to like for a long for a long ఇని మనం తీసుకొస్తున్నాం యాక్చువల్ ఆఫీస్ నుంచి ఆఫీస్ నుంచి కంట్రీ ఇఫ్ యు వాంట్ టు స్పీక్ యు కెన్ రైజ్ అప్ యువర్ హ్యాండ్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ యు ఆర్ నాట్ స్పీకింగ్ ప్లీజ్ మ్యూట్ యువర్ మైక్ ఇఫ్ యు ఆర్ నాట్ స్పీకింగ్ ప్లీజ్ మ్యూట్ యువర్ మైక్ okay yes you can use the message if you want to talk raise your hand i will unmute you and you will... wow i'm sorry for those who cannot like hear me well i'll try slow down and try the a bit more audible for you okay here we go we are going to Okay, here we go. For the iPareja prerequisites, for you to build on an iPareja platform, you need to have some, you have to have like a ton of packages installed, so i think i don't have a pre- i don't have i had presentations for this event but after evaluating what we are going to cover and how we are going to approach it i felt like maybe we should give it another approach so that we can we can allow everyone to like experience real time development pro- process of the how you can develop on your own how you can test out things on your own how you can try out things so for that reason i'm going to like use the i'm going to use vs code i'm going to type i'm going to make i'm going we are going to type along we are going to like utilize this platform for for those who of you prefer using the terminal you can use the terminal for those of you who want to use vs code terminal you can use it feel free to like explore any possible avenue to to learn this and try to develop here so first things first before you start developing on on for iperia fabric you need to have satan certain softwares and script files installed into your system so first you need to install cal to install cal for those who are running on linux you we know you normally use the you you can there are a ton of ways to install it which are available you can google them but the the most common one is the advanced packaging tool which is apt you can install it by typing in to your command sudo apt install cal that should install for you cal i think also there are more instructions on google you should have cal you should have docker installed on your system to install docker you you use sudo apt install docker i can we can do that that's the command to install docker I'm not going to install it because I think I have one of the versions installed. Yeah, I have one of the versions installed. 
Dudley. Thirdly, we need to install just a minute. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Yes. Ooh, you can install Docker using the this command sudo apt install Docker. Then you you can also you also need Docker composer compose. You can install Docker dash compose here. Is the command to install that. For those of you who want to follow along using the Hyperedge Fabric documentation, you can go over to the website and check that out. It's available how to set up your environment. That's the command to install. Docker Compose. Also, you need to install Go. Hyperedge Fabric is built using Go. So for you to run it, you have to have Go installed on your computer. You also need NBM, NPM and Node installed on your system. There are available resources online on how to install NBM using NPM packet, NPM installation procedures. You can, you, you also have to, you need to install Node. You need to install Python, Python 2.7. For, for those of you, for those of you who are using Ubuntu 22, Ubuntu 18 and above, they migrated to Python 3. So you either have to downgrade it or install Python 2 alongside by Python 3, which is possible. There are procedures on how to install those ones. Yeah, those are the prerequisites you need for you to develop on a project fabric. So if you have any question, any questions, can check. Or oh, about the OS I'm using, I'm using Linux. I'm using Ubuntu Preva. Yes. On setting up the environment. Yeah. The second step is on how you can set up the environment to, to like run, run this. We are going to use the commands I'm going to list here. For those ones who want to follow along with me, I'm going, I hope, for those who are trying to install the packages and other, for those ones who are, who are still trying to install the packages, trying to set them up, I think Kyle is pretty, it, it's, it, it's not that hard to, 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 to install with the correct, Internet speeds are same, the same with Docker, with Docker Compose also, and PMZ takes some, some time to install. So I think I will take questions in the meantime, as we like if those ones who are trying to install NPM and Python or trying to downgrade to Python 2.7. Yes, also you can. You can develop, you can you can do hyperedge fabric on Windows. You can go to 
to the Linux subsystem in Windows, activate it and install Ubuntu. I think that that would give you a chance to like develop Hyperledger Fabric on Windows. Yes, for questions, for those who have questions, I'm taking questions, you can paste them over on our chat section. Yes, so because this recording will be available after this event, after this meetup, you will find it on the on Hyperledger YouTube from channels. You can go and revisit some of the concepts that we're going to cover here. So just a recap, you have to have car installed on your, on your laptop, Docker, Docker Compose, Go, NPM, Node, Python 2.7. Then now we are going to, to set ourselves up for, for, for on how to download the script, how to run it and how you can start developing on iPad fabric. So the first thing is going, we are going to manage our git commands using the following command. I think I'm going to type it into our chat. I'm going to type these commands to our chat so that they are available for everyone so that you don't need to struggle typing them from from the keyboard from Okay, okay, I'll try, I will really try to, I'm going to really try to, to be a bit slow. Yeah. Those are the commands we're going to use. So you can think for those of you. First, we're going to change our global auto CRF. You need to, to say that to false. We say that to false. You also set the wrong parts to true. This one is going to, for those ones of you who may be not be aware of the commands that we are typing in now. This one is going to handle GitHub as some default links, default ring length. Some, some parts can be pretty wrong, like the, the part to, 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 to access an online source can be very long. So sometimes you have to like tell Git that one of the parts we are going to follow might have wronger characters. And for that, you have to like instruct it what to do. So for this case, we are telling it, if you get wrong, wrong parts, it's okay, go ahead. That's what we want. So from here on, I think you will follow along with me. The first thing you are going to do is to make a directory, which is pretty much easy. Make a directory, you can name it, any name you feel comfortable. For me, I'm going to name my hyperranger. So then I'm going to change directory to that directory then to check it's empty. So after you have, you have created the directory, you are going to change that directory, then you are going to like 
get the script from this link. I'm going to just copy and paste this link here. Then you press enter. I think we have a typo. I think we have a typo somewhere. We have a typo. Yes. Uh, yeah. We have a typo. Yeah. Once you correct that typo, I am going to copy and paste this to our chat section. Copy. Paste. There you go. It will start to start downloading that. Once, once you have downloaded your files, you can head over to that directory. Once you are there, you will find these files, fabric samples. Once you are into those samples, you can change directory into fabric samples. Yeah, yeah, there we go. For those of you who want to follow through, the first thing you do is you create a directory in one of your folders. You can create another one. So we created a directory called hyperager. We, we cloned this repos into the hyperager folder. It, it downloaded fabric samples, which has these files. Once you have those files in your local computer, you can change your directory to change directory to no. In the terminal, you change directory into test network. test network, then you can ls that to make sure for we are using iPad Ranger version not sure of the version. Let me confirm the version. I think we are using, I'm using the latest version. Let's try and see which version it's downloading. I'm using the most recent one. So, version 2.4.9. That's the version we are using. 2.4.9. We are not using version 2.5. Just a word of advice for those who are new or maybe trying to find their way through 
we have different versions. The most, for me, the most stable one is version 2.2. That's the one I'm using for my projects and the other things I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And for those like who are into security like me, version 2.2 over offers you diverse development capabilities which are pretty much stable in every aspect. So for, for, for someone who's exploring, I think when I started off, I didn't even know about versions. It was what am I trying to do? Then I go out there, explore. But once you go into production, you are not going to have like, as much as you have the freedom to use any version you want to use, you have to like know through the phases or through the stages of versions, what does the present one offer that the previous one didn't offer? That gives you the power to, to know or to decide what and how to do to manage certain aspect of the of, of of development like what does my project need what are the the security plugins i'm going to use what 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 how is my network going to like be managed how many organizations do i have in my networks how many channels do i want between the the organizations, all that stuff, you have to like really understand how those, those, how that infra infrastructure comes together to build a secure, reliable network for your business. Yeah. So our next stop. Yeah. You change the directory to test dash network. This is a test network for Hyperedia. Initially, it was called my first network. If I can remember, build your first my build my first network. Build your first network. Yeah, that was the name. Then it changed to test test network, and that's the current name for those ones who are concerned about the file rights and other stuff, you can LL and see which, what, what, what can I do with my files. For those of you who understand how to give permissions to files, how to like, which files do you want to like write? Which ones are you like a bit rigid that you don't want to tamper with? You can disable like their their right privileges, you can just keep them as read only. That, that that protects you from, even if you end up in the wrong file, even if you try everything, it can't edit, that protects you not only in the hyperedia ecosystem, but also in your development. If you are a programmer and you're working on multiple files, and the, that, that one file that normally people say you type that one, we are all mm, in, in fire, you see. If you are, if you have developed in a while, the star one file, if you touch it, you have to like start over again. Like me, when I, I started developing, I was really scared about editing files. So sometimes you can, you can, there are files that you don't want to tamper with. So for this one, you can LL, then you can change mode, you can try different stuff if you are good in Linux. Gives you more freedom to handle certain things. So we are going to check what is in our network script. Yeah. It might not be very visual, but I think you can see, let's see where it starts from. And we can. Now, this is the script that you use to like 
This is the script that brings up Hyperedia fabric network for testing smart contracts. So this is the script where like it's your boilerplate. It's here is where like it's your Hyperedia fabric hello world. The same way you when you are running a new programming language, the first step you do, the first thing you the first program you, you write is hello world. And now for the Hyperedia fabric network, this is your hello world. It's, it's, it does, it's not really an hello world because normally hello world is a bit simpler, smaller, but that tells you the power that comes with the Hyperedia fabric. Because if this is a hello world, then the real thing is the real thing because it gives you freedom to to manage your consensus, to manage your security, to manage your nodes, on you manage how your nodes will communicate. It gives you a chance to write smart contracts within the ecosystem using Go, Java, and JavaScript. Or uh, it's your choice which you want to like write your chain code in. Oh, and by the way, chain code is the fancy way of saying smart contracts in Hyperedia Fabric. So for those of you who are into the Web3 space, chain code is like saying smart contracts in, in EVM. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we have this, this tells us which which it, it 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 like gives us more information of what this script does. We have also other uh, the Docker versions, the Docker files it's going to use how to generate. There are also other aspects that comes into development on the Pareja fabric, which among them is the Cryptogen. Cryptogen is, uh, is how the network identifies entities within the network, how it, on, it, how it authenticates the devices on the network, how the Genesis block is created and how it's maintained through the network, how peers within the network communicate through the set, they are, okay, I want you to get this. Within the Apparatia fabric, there are different aspects within its ecosystem. First, we have organizations. Organizations are the entities, the main entities within the, the network. For instance, let's take IBM and Google. Google are two different organizations, but they are, they are resources that they share. Like they, they are, they are available on Google, they are not available on IBM. So they can exchange resources between the two organizations. Again, within the two organizations, there are other organizations which are peers to this organization. And this organization share common ranger from where they share a common source of truth that gives that that the path through which they share this information and resources it's called a channel and within the same with the, within these organizations there can be different channels there there can be channels between organization a and b and then and if c comes into play then there's a communication between a and b a and C, B and C, which are independent of each other, but for the resources that A and B shares, there's a channel for that, but for resources that are shared between three different organizations, they are different, a different channel to that, then there the, the, the is the current state of each organization where, where if a resource comes available in one organization, the other organizations don't know, 
they can use the word state. The word state gives them a chance to get the current state of the chain. Yeah. Again, also there can be people can be asking questions where where do you get this information from? And that can be made available through the transaction log where like it keeps track of all the transactions that have happened within that organization. I think it's all about like creating a common source of truth using identity, using cryptographic algorithms to, to, to like make sure that the, the information shared between those 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 within the net network in in a way that that is that is trust yeah mm, someone is asking if i can actually share from the start yes i will share that i think after this meeting this recording will be made available you can go back and check that one out you will see you can check that one out and know what we have covered or we also have the config transaction generator this one in full is the configuration transaction generator is a tool used to create the genesis block for those of you who don't know the genesis block is the first block within the blockchain like if today the day ethereum started there was the first transaction on that block that's the genesis block It's the first block within a blockchain yeah it uses the config yeah more file and thus those those are pretty direct because we cannot just be on the scope of this video because that's a bit technical for us to go into but i was also i will also like take you through the file structure of this. So let's try seeing this file structure, this. Yeah, now we are going to try to simulate this network. Yeah. Okay. We might not be able to actually simulate or to bring up the network because of obvious reasons, which I will share with you. One of them being for those of you who use Docker locally, sometimes Docker or I run on. On my machine, if I try bring up Docker, it will freeze my computer. I think so. Yeah, it will freeze it. So for you to simulate the network, you like have to generate the network using the command. Where you run the script, then you generate the network. Once it's trying to ask for, yeah, using Docker and Docker Compose, it's trying to ask if I have Docker and Docker Compose running, I can run Docker and Docker Compose, yes, but if I run them now, we will try to run them in one of my, what? I'll try to run them, I will try to run it in one of my online resource computers, which I normally use for, for such, tasks later in this video or 
next videos. But for today, I think for now, if I try running it, it will freeze my machine. So you have to bear with me. So we have up to up the network, you use the flag up, which bring, brings up the fabric order and PS nodes. And when you bring up the, the fabric, we don't have any channel created. We are going to have just how the PS will be stacked in the network, but there will be no channels there will be no communication between one node and another. Generate, it's a flag that I think um, that generate flag, your question is best answered in the test network script. Okay, I think for the sake of time and what generate does, it's when you tell this script to create um to create a test network from certain instructions. It's like when you tell okay, you tell a program to use the instructions that are offered within the script to generate an instruction stack for a certain task. So for this case, for this script, for those who have, gone, who have distracted the script and gone over through it, you can realize that when you, you generate using the script, it creates two organizations and two peers for each organization, but it doesn't create channel, channels between the organization and specified by the, by the creator. So basically what Generate does, it creates two organization, two, let's say two nodes, which have two peers each. Yeah, that is done. We have a we can bring up like the, the network using the flag app. We can run the script and tell it to up the, the network. We can also do what too. We can shut it down also using down. And also like you can't run to, you cannot generate two networks all at once without shutting one. So you have to like shut one down. For you to create a channel, you have to up and create a channel. Like as I told you earlier, when you generate a network, it, it doesn't have channels. You have to specify the channels and create those channels. Also like you can up the, the channels using the test network script, but also you can create your custom channels using your create channels and also deploy them over to your script using deploy CC. And for you to like bring up your network, you have to run the script and up the network. It will require now for you, it will use Docker and, Combo, Docker, and Docker Composer for you to run. But for today, because of the of the processor speed of my computer, the, the resources that Docker requires, they really suppress the ability of my computer. So basically that's why I, I haven't started it, but it's possible that I can start, but it might lead to other problems. Yes, we were running the first network. The file structure, I think I shared something on that. Uh, 
uh, also now yeah like yeah the surprise community gift this one is available on let me We one of that is this one. Yeah. Um for the surprise gift for you. One is that the I played the mentorship program is here for 2023. It's available, you can add over to the link that I've shared. You can check out the requirements. You can, you, you can, you are going to get great mentors who are going to guide you. It has very great, it, it has really good advantages for you to like explore, learn. Learn and maybe and maybe end up working one of the projects yes because hyperedia is an open source platform where if you come with a good idea there are groups that are willing to support you to help you grow and help you learn and by the way i might be not a very good orator, but I know with the terminal, the, the code editors, there's so much that one can do. You might not be able to like share a lot, but you're able to do a lot with the Hyperedia community because they have a ton of projects out there. Those projects I may by people like you, people are willing to change the world. So it's, it's, it's our time to like, get people who share a common goal to come together and work together. I think for those who are interested in this, you can, you can, you can check out the link, see what it has also, Secondly, I wish you are all from Kenya, because for our Kenyan community, we have like, I have, I have, I have stickers, I have pens, I have t-shirts for the Kenyan community, which I will make sure for those who are present, and those who are unable to attend, who are willing to get those t-shirts, I will try as much as possible to communicate with you in our community channels on how you are going to get them. Then again, I'll try and make this more graphical. I, I had a graphical presentation for this one, but I travel and I couldn't travel with every resource that I had for this event. I, I, I plan to get this postponed, but because of obvious reasons, it was postponed from Feb to March, and I didn't want to postpone it anymore. It, it was supposed to be hosted by someone else, but I had to take over because it wasn't available this week, so. I think we will have a Pro Max session in the near future when it's available. Yes, for those who are asking about if they are available related projects, there are, there are a ton of them. 
Mm, it all depends on what you want, but you can head over to the Hyperedia Fabric web website and try to check out the project. There are community group, groups, projects. And I think you are going to like learn big time because we have like from version one to version 2.4, we have like previous events. Let me share with you copy link. I'm going to share with you the we have the releases, the related projects, the specific related projects. I will consolidate a list for you all and share with you all the related project to the Pareja community. Yes, I'm going to want to, I think, did I mute everyone? You can raise up your hand, you can. Yes, you have the freedom to unmute yourself. You can ask a question, make an inquiry, 